Hello, this is Joe Neville, back with another Aruba AOS CX Basics video. In this one, I'm going to be configuring OSPF v2, also known as IPv4's OSPF, of course. Here's my network, it's a three node network made up of Aruba 6300s. You can see the physical connections, we've got 6300-1 connected to dash 2 and dash 2 connects on to dash 3. But there's no connection between dash 1 and dash 3. So we're going to use OSPF to allow dash 1 to learn about the subnets that it's not connected to, this one here, and the loop back on dash 3. Here is my to-do list. First of all, ping from dash one to dash three. Okay, so that's going to be how we test that I've successfully configured OSPF. Here's some additional requirements. So we need to put everything in area zero, fine. So it's just a single area network, nice and easy. We're going to use OSPF authentication. We're going to use the MD5 type, which is not tricky, but if you're not familiar with the commands, it can take a bit of guesswork or looking in the config guide, of course. We're running point-to-point -point networks here. So there's no multi-access required. Dash one, dash two are connected to dash three. So I'm going to configure my links as OSPF network point-to-point. -point. And then finally, I am going to check through the show commands and look at the log. We'll look at the routing table, the link state database, those kind of things. Right then, let's jump into it. First of all, I'm going to SSH into 6300-1. The management network for these devices is v6 only in my home lab, hence the address. And I've got public key authentication set up, which is why I don't need to put in a password. I'll show you the configuration. It's pretty basic at the moment. Um, I'm running the latest version of code at the time of recording. Then we've got the public key information. And this is the physical interface that's going to connect to dash two. That is as the default at the moment, which is a layer two interface. I need to turn that into layer three. And you can see there's no router or SPF in the configuration at all at the moment. So let's get going then. I'm going to start with my interfaces, give those some IP addresses, which I've just chosen beforehand. And let's do the physical interface as well. I'll convert to layer three by putting in routing there. Now that's layer three, we can give it an IP address. Give it a slash 31. Okay, now I'm going to go to router OSPF. So that will create the OSPF process. Let's do a question mark on there. So this is where you configure the area, BFD. You've got an enable and disable. Enable is the default. You won't see that in the configuration. Only if you disable it will you see that command. Um, what else have we got? Passive interface. I'm going to use passive interface so that the OSPF interfaces will only send and receive OSPF packets if you configure no passive interface against them. Just a nice bit of hygiene redistribution there and the router ID, timers, etc. Okay, so let's jump up to the top again. And I want that router ID, which is the loopback. I'm going to go, what is it? Area zero we need to configure. You can just put in zero and it will fill it, fill in the four octet 0.0.0.0. I wanted passive interface default it's only become active when we negate that i think that's it let's have a look it's a pretty basic it's up at the top here yeah so router id we've got the passive interface default and i've got my area now to put the interfaces into ospf so interface loopback zero IP OSPF 1, the process, area 0, done. Now we go here, which there's more to do on this one. So it's IP OSPF 1, area 0. We'll go back up to the top. But if we look here, there's more functionality that's required. So it's not just turning the process on. You've got lots on there, like the hello interval, dead interval that you can configure, cost, etc. Now, what's one of the things that we mentioned at the beginning was the authentication. So I'll deal with that now. And I'm going to be using 
the MD5 version of authentication. So this is where it can be a little tricky if you're not used to it. So you, if you see authentication or authentication key, what I actually need to configure is this message digest key first. Let's do that, question mark. So you give it a key ID, MD5, plain text, which means I'm going to be typing it in in plain text. It will convert it in the configuration. I'll just type password for that as my password. Enter, okay. There you can see it's shown in the configuration as cipher text. Okay, but that's not turned on yet. What you also have to do, you don't just give it the key, you have to turn it on. So there, that's where the authentication comes in. So we go authentication and then we select message digest, which turns it on. So that's essentially, you add the key and then you turn it on. Now, what else did we want? No, I've got to remember this. IP OSPF passive interface, I need to turn that on. Okay, good. So now this is an enabled OSPF interface. And also, uh, because it's point to point, I want to configure that so it's network and then you've got point to point. Now the reason for doing that is because we've got point to point interfaces, we don't need the designated router election. So it speeds things up. You're not going to have a DR or a BDR. So there's no need for an OSPF node when it comes up to listen on that interface for the election and run that process. So you can speed things up by just saying point to point, the interface will come up and, re and it will know that there's not gonna be an election. It should just try to form an adjacency with the other end. Come out of there, show run interface. I think that's it. So we've got no passive, we've got our area, point to point, and we've got our authentication. That's what I was going to go for. Let's have a look at some of those show commands. So show IP OSPF, you can enter that. If you've got different processes, you would enter one or two for the processes. Here you can see you've got, this gives you a, a summary of the configuration, max path, destination, you know, going through here, we've already got one area, sure. BFD disabled, fine. Area zero, which is active. And then you've got the interfaces here in this area and only a single LSA at the moment. Um, so if you wanted to look at further tables, LSDB. So this is the type one, the router. I have to try to remember my types. We're only gonna be dealing with type ones with this um, setup. So there it is. What else have we got? We've got show IP OSPF interface. So we've got our two interfaces. And against here, you've got things like the timers. Because it's point to point, you've got the lower timers, so it's 10 and 40. We've got, ah, there you can see MD5 authentication, point to point up there. And here's my loop back, so that has a different state. Now, what else have we got? Just going through these. Neighbors, no point showing that yet. You've got routes, which will make a bit more sense in a moment statistics okay so these are essentially bad things so drops um yeah every one of those is a, a drop so the, that could be useful for troubleshooting now i'm going to go split screen jump over to dash two pretty much the same no ospf yet uh, i'll do the interfaces over this side first so interface lo zero and this one i'm going to give it the ip address of 1.1.1.2 exit so interface 1.1.1 and again mustn't forget turn it into a layer 3 now I can give it an IP address which will be the other end of the slash 31 yeah good okay come out of there ping 1.168.5.1 see okay and zero good so we can ping across that link the link is up now where is that ospf sure i don't really say very much by copying it across i need the different router id passive interface default and going too fast area zero okay now let's go 
0, IP, OSPF1, area 0, okay, interface, again, area 0, let's put in that OSPF message digest key 1, MD5, plain, password, now I'll copy all of this across, I copy paste, yeah, okay, Show IP OSPF interface point to point, all looks good. So, if you want to look at the logging, you can go C OSPF V2 to just look at those. I'll pull that across so you can see there actually. So, router ID 1.1, and it's gone to, from you can see where it's going through the various stages, and now we've gone up to full. And so now some of our show commands will make a bit more sense to us. Okay, all right, I'll still have to pull that across there. It's because of the big font. Uh, so you can see the neighbor there. So that's dash two seeing dash one. We're in a full state, which is good, obviously, the neighbor address and the interface. Is there a detail? Yeah, there's detail as well. So you can get a bit more information there. Show IP OSPF. Let's go link state database. There you got the two LSIDs, both type ones. Uh, and also you can look at the routes. So you can see the routes that are learnt. Dash ones loop back. And we've got the connected slash 31 there. This is a good command because you can see the OSPF routes that are then pushed to the routing table as candidates and the routing table will select the best route to display. Which means if we look at the routing table, you won't see that slash 31 in there from OSPF. You'll see it as connected because that's the lower distance for, for the route. What we do see is that we've learned the loop back because that's not directly connected. We've learned the loop back of dash one via OSPF. Fine. OK, now I've got to configure the second physical interface on this one. I'll get rid of dash one for now. Let's kill that off. Dash two and we need to go routing again, IP address. I'm going to take the lower address of the slash 31. Point to point, it's all the same. I'll jump on to dash three now. Do show run interface. Network type, of course, easy to forget. I think that's it. So fingers crossed, so it was show logging. <laughs> Getting some of these, trying to go too fast. OSPF V2. Okay, so we should see two and we do. So two is full. Now let's have a look at the various show commands. LSDB and we've got the three type ones. Show IP OSPF root. Nice, so we've got dash one's loop back there, good. And we've got that interconnect, the indirect subnet there, learnt via OSPF. Let's uh, look at the routing table. So we should have, yeah, so there, that's that interconnect and there's the two loop backs. And then to finish off, we need to do our end-to-end -end ping. I'll do it from dash three. So we need to ping 1.1.1.1 and I use the source of 1.1.1.3. Let's do it. Okay, excellent. So we are working. I'll save that configuration there. Save the configuration over here. To recap, we pinged from, well, we did it from three to one, but it was successful using the source of the loopback. That's good. 
Everything in area zero, yes, I was using MD5 authentication on the interfaces. All of my networks were point to point, even though I nearly forgot one of them. And then we went through the uh, show commands. That's it for this video. Just the basics then for OSPF v2. Drop me a comment if you would like to see some more advanced configuration on this. I could do some redistribution, play around with the different LSAs, that kind of thing. Please do like and subscribe, all of those good things. That just leaves me to say, my name is Joe Neville. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.